Hi folks. Okay, going from last night's one then. So, conviction of the Holy Spirit. Let's talk a bit more about that. Well, as I said in the videos last night, it is very much a case where the majority of people in church are not going to turn around and start doing things according to God's will and God's ways unless they understand directly from God that their path is not the path they should have been on. Right? Yeah. And as I say, being broken is something which is a blessing because God can change you. Yeah, mould you and shape you through that. Conviction of the Holy Spirit is going to break people. Now, conviction of the Holy Spirit is... <laughs> well, when I was a... Uh, a young Christian, we were told that the conviction of the Holy Spirit would be what convicts those who aren't saved that they're a sinner, right? Mm, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> that just isn't true. Not in any way, shape or form. No, that's not conviction of the Holy Spirit. No, never has been. No. For the church as it is right now, it's going to be spiritually, but we're, the example I give would be more of a physical. You're going to be in church and suddenly your leg is going to snap. But in the most painful way possible, in the most agonising way possible. But this will be a spiritual thing. It won't be a physical thing. Spiritually, your belief, your understanding, your ways are going to snap. You're going to come to a sudden understanding that your path that you've chosen was leading you to eternity in hell. And people are going to fall on the floor in floods of tears, wailing and screaming. They're going to be really pissed with me because if <laughs> if I'm in one of these churches while they're doing this, I'm going to be praising God. I'm going to be really happy because I'm going to know what's going on. <laughs> I'll be way hey, been waiting for this, <laughs> and they're going to be like, "You nasty, evil person! How can you cheer while we're in such pain?" Because I know what the pain is leading to. That's why. Because I know that you've been broken. You've been broken for a purpose. So therefore, way hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah, this conviction is going to be harsh on people. They need it. They need it. Ideally speaking, you see, the, the thing of it is, what people need is to be broken, broken in a way where God can reshape. Right, so you imagine having what would normally take years to do happening in what a day, two days, a very short amount of time, less than a day in most cases, right? Maybe an hour. It's gonna be agonizing, truly agonizing. It's going to be like something that nobody has ever been through. You're going to go through quite similar to what Christ went through, but for a short amount of time. Right? It's going to be bad for those people. And there are many, many people in the churches who won't be going through that, will be thanking God they're not, but they're the ones who go to hell. Because they're the ones that God knows that they won't be able to go through this. If God put them through this, they would end their own lives anyway, instantly. They would find something to shove through their neck to stop it. And so God doesn't bother with those people. Because he knows they're gone. They're already gone. Well, again, we have to understand that 
the enemy sowed tares in amongst the wheat. Right? Yeah. The tares are still tares. Now, had the church been functioning as it should have been, some of the tares may have been converted to wheat. Some may have been converted. But the church has not been doing that in any way, shape or form. So therefore, most of the tares are still tares. They've been in church, but they're going to go to hell for eternity. That's the reality they are. Because they're still very much of this world, and their thinking is very much of this world, very much of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so therefore, unfortunately speaking, they are... Yeah. But as I say, it is what it is. God is not going to bring everyone. He never brought everyone. Of all the people that, that were at the meetings that the Lord held, where he spoke, how many of those people became disciples? Only 12. Only 12. Most of those people that heard and marveled just went back to their lives. It went into one ear and came basically pretty much straight through the other. Because when you think about it, having Yeshua in that area, doing what he did, seeing all of that, every single person who witnessed any of that, their life should have been changed magnificently at that point in time. But they weren't. They weren't. See, most people in church would say, oh, if, if I was there, I would have done... No, you wouldn't. Because if you were there, you would have reacted exactly the same as they did. And people in church now are still reacting exactly the same as most of the people there did. Yeah, they're, they're sort of... They sort of understand... That they see it, they sort of believe it, but they don't really want to live it. And so therefore, yeah. It is what it is. And God understands that completely. Basically, as I say, with conviction, conviction is not going to be put onto anyone who... Who hasn't been crying out for God? Who hasn't been crying out for God to bring revival? Yeah, truly crying out to God to bring, to bring revival. Because God's not going to bring it on a wide scale. He's going to bring it individually. And that's what that conviction is going to be. Again, what did people expect revival to look like? I, I think most of them expected revival to be yeah, a group of people starting this new thing and this new thing would just blow all around the world and suddenly everyone would just receive it and job done. Yeah, not going to happen. Not in any way, shape or form is that going to happen. So, yeah. What does I say? When when God does things quite often it seems like a curse but it is really a blessing and the conviction that's coming by the Holy Spirit is going to seem very very much like that very very much like that oh yeah for the people that go through it oh yeah and for the people that are talking in their ears they're going to say this is a curse from God but it's not. Oh, it is not. It really is not a curse from God. This is a blessing. Because if God is paying enough attention to you, to focus on you, to break you, to mould you, that's love. Absolute, complete love. So, there you go. I look forward to it. And you should as well. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Enjoy. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.